Welcome to Screencast 7, Graphing Linear Functions. In this problem, we will be looking at both graphing and writing a function. Our problem states that a group of climbers begin climbing at an elevation of 6,500 feet and ascend at a rate of 600 vertical feet per hour. We are asked to identify the independent and dependent variables of the problem, draw a graph of the function, find their elevation after three and a half hours, then write a linear function to model what is happening, and finally use the function to find the hiker's elevation after three and a half hours and see how that compares to the answer that we got in number two. The first problem facing us is identifying the independent and dependent variables in this particular problem. When you're asked that question, you want to ask yourself, what is dependent upon what? In this case, the height of elevation is dependent upon the amount of time that they have been hiking. Elevation dependent upon time. Dependent part of that, the elevation, is our dependent variable. That's our y in this particular problem. What causes the height to change, in this case the time that they've been hiking, is our independent variable. We will go ahead and label those now. For our purposes, we will call time t, that's our independent variable. Our dependent variable is our height. And again, for our purposes, we will label that h. The next thing that we have been asked to do is to draw a graph of the function. Now you can see that I've partially set a graph up for us here. I'm actually going to rename the variables. Um, this graph printed with the standard variables of x and y, which are fine. We can use those. Um, but since we actually have values already with abbreviations associated with them that make a little bit more sense. We are going to replace x with t for time. Our independent variable always appears across the horizontal axis. And we are going to replace the standard y with an h. The next thing that we have to do is to draw a graph of the function. And for that, we need to set up a table of values, which I will do next. When no time has elapsed, when t is equal to 0, our hikers are at 6,500 feet. I am going to plot that 6,500 feet on the h-axis. We have 5,000 here. The next line up would be 6,000. 6,500 would fall just about there. After one hour, they are going to gain another 600 vertical feet, which puts them at 7,100 feet. Only 5 is labeled down here, but just to make it easier for us, I'm actually going to go back in and enter a few more numbers. So after one hour has passed, we are now up to 7,100, which would be just about there. Another hour passes and we are at 7,700 vertical feet, which would put us right about there. And then after a third hour has passed, that will put us at 8,300 feet, which would be right about there. You should be able to see that this is forming a very nice linear function at this particular point in time. If I add another value to our little table that we have going here and an, add another 600 vertical feet, I will be at 8,900 vertical feet, which puts us right about here. And since we've got the space on our graph, if I add another, I don't have room on my table, but if I add another 600 to what I've got going here, I will be at 9,500 feet after five hours, which puts us right here. And we can see that this data forms a straight line. It is a linear function. 
So I'm going to go ahead and connect those dots so we can watch the progress of our hiker from the beginning of the hike until we actually are off this, our graph here, which is right about there. Then I'm going to go back and I'm just going to darken up the dots that I did put in here so that you can see them through the line. So now we've drawn a graph of the function and we are being asked to use the graph to find their elevation after 3.5 hours. To do that, we are going to first identify where 3.5 hours would fall on the t-axis here, which is right about where I have my pen positioned. And I am going to draw a line from that point up to where it intersects the graph, which is approximately right about there. Then I am going to extend that line over to our axis that shows height, which you can see intersects approximately right there. So it looks like, and again at this point we're just doing an estimate, but it looks like we have a value somewhere between 8,000 and 9,000, closer to the 9,000, possibly at 8,700 feet or 8,800 feet. If we look at where 8,500 feet would be, it's right about there. So just to kind of keep track, and again, this is an estimate because we're just using the graph, uh, it looks like their elevation is going to be somewhere between 8,000 700 feet to 8,800 feet. And it's perfectly okay to just give what you feel is the best estimate at that particular point in time. Now we're going to go on and be a little bit more specific by writing the linear function that models that graph. Our basic format for a linear function we know as y equals mx plus b. Now in our instance, remember, we replaced the x with a t for time, and I'm going to do that right now, and we replaced the y with h for height. We have two other variables there, m, which remember stands for slope, which is rate of change, and b which is the y, or in this case the h-intercept. It is where the line intercepts the vertical axes. For practical purposes, in a word problem, it is the initial value. In our particular problem, the slope, or rate of change, is the speed with which the hikers are gaining height. And for us, that is 600 vertical feet per hour. The key here is the fact that we actually do have a rate listed for us, and that rate is feet per hour. The slope in this particular problem is going to be 600. The initial value in this particular problem, which for us was our h-intercept, is where they began climbing, and that is at 6,500 feet. We put that information together, and the height at any given time is going to be equal to the rate of change, which is 600, times the amount of time that they have been climbing for, plus the height that they started off at, which was 6,500. We now have a function that we can use to answer the question from number two, which also appears in number four, and that is, what is the hiker's elevation after 3.5 hours? And does this confirm our estimate in number two? We're going to take our function, h equals 600t plus 6500, and plug in the particular value that we're interested in for time. We end up with 8,600 feet. Now you can see that this particular answer is a little bit under what we had estimated. That was probably due to the fact that um, when I was constructing my lines in the graph, especially doing this on this particular screen, I, the vertical line did 
tilt a little bit off vertical to the right, which popped the number up just a tiny bit, but you can still see that our estimate was extremely close. If we want an estimate, the graph is fine. If we want a particular value, then we're better off to write the function and go from there.